Hey guys, Monochrome here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. Today we're taking a look at the Stanley Skeleton Folding Pocket Knife. Very creative name. But in fairness, it does describe exactly what you are getting. And to be clear, no, this is not a fancy box cutter. This is not a razor knife. Normally, when you think of the brand Stanley, well, that's what you think of. But no, this is actually a knife. There's the Stanley logo. And by the way, you will not find that logo on the tang. As a matter of fact, you won't find anything on the tang. Which leads me to believe, and this is just an educated guess, but I think this is a cheap, generic, made-in-China knife. Someone at Stanley noticed it and said, hey, why don't you put our logo on the handle? We'll buy a bunch of these and we'll sell it under our brand. That's probably what happened. Although in fairness, I have not seen this particular design anywhere else. Now, as far as the blade steel, it's listed as stainless steel. That's it, just stainless steel. I couldn't tell you which one. Uh, hopefully it's not D2. In some places that's considered a stainless steel. In other places, a carbon steel. But yeah, just generic stainless steel. It's not always a bad thing when you don't know exactly what you're getting. I mean, after all, the Gerber Knife Company for many years has been known for making knives out of mystery steel that haven't been too expensive. But... At least with Gerber, you do get a certain level of quality. So most people don't mind using Gerber mystery steel. But on this, uh, yeah. I mean, from a brand known for making razor knives, fancy box cutters, yeah, that's... Um, it would be nice if we knew what this blade was made out of other than stainless steel. And yeah, as you can see, not reflective at all. So bead blasted stainless steel. I mean, it is a good looking knife overall and it is very cheap. You can find this online for actually under $13. That's right, $13. Let's take a look at a few of its shortcomings, though. To be clear, these three holes here, they're just for design and to lighten the knife a little bit. That's all. These are not thumb opening holes. And since this has a skeletonized rocker lock, there's a lot of tension in the closed position. Yeah, 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 no, no you are not going to one hand open this guy. No, 
And those holes are way too narrow anyway. Yeah, so this is definitely a two-handed affair. And that lock mechanism is quite stiff, which is what you would expect from a traditional rocker lock. Now, in the open position, yes, there is some blade play both side to side and up and down, but just the tiniest bit. You can barely feel it, but there is just the tiniest bit of blade play, both up and down, side to side. That's not really an issue, though. It's there, but I would say it's not an issue. Like I said, just the tiniest bit. Skeletonized handle to help reduce weight, but that black handle is aluminum, so it's already lightweight, but okay. Now, you do get a lanyard hole, which is nice, but I can feel it with my fingers. It is, it is sharp on the inside. It's just a little sharp on the inside. So any cordage you put through there will likely fray over time. And, I mean, there are some skeletonized knife designs that still incorporate a pocket carry clip. This is not one of them. That's right, no clip. No clip at all. You do not get a one-hand opening feature for the blade, and you do not get a pocket carry clip. Now, I will say this, there was attention to detail paid to the handle because this handle is not sharp at all anywhere. It's been completely rounded, it's been dehorned, everything is nice and rounded and smooth. You can really bear down hard, there's no hot spots, none. Everything on the handle has been very nicely contoured and rounded. Nothing sharp on the handle. But ironically, because this is smooth aluminum, very smooth aluminum, when you hold it in your hand, I don't know, guys. I mean, this is not a hard-use knife, and you shouldn't even remotely attempt any hard-use tasks. Because of that very smooth aluminum handle with everything being rounded off, yeah, there is a little bit of fear that if you're using this for a heavy-duty task or maybe certain medium-duty tasks that your hand, because of all that smoothness and roundness, might slip off onto the cutting edge. I mean, yeah, this is going to be ideal for light cutting chores and certain medium-duty cutting chores where you need a good lock mechanism. And you do get one on this knife. You definitely do get one on this knife. Um, no way to adjust the pivot pin, although it does look like there's four small indentations, so maybe with a special tool you could do it, but you don't get that tool when you order the knife. And unfortunately, there's one other issue. Um, the blade shape, yeah. Uh, Stanley calls it a drop point. Uh, no, no, that is a spear point blade shape. And even though it's single edged, it is symmetrical. Yeah. The overall blade shape itself is symmetrical, and in quite a few jurisdictions, 
just that in and of itself will make this illegal to carry concealed out in public, such as just having it in your pants pocket. So please keep that in mind. It is not double-edged, as you can see, not at all. There is no way to sharpen the top portion. But one thing I noticed is the tip. I mean, on my camera, for some odd reason, that tip looks as though it's very narrow and sharp. And yes, it is sharp, but it's also a bit blunted. Again, just the tiniest bit. On my camera, it's looking a lot more narrow and sharper than it actually is in real life. I'm not sure why that's happening, but that is a partially blunted tip. And it's not as though I was stabbing this into concrete or wood or some such nonsense. No, no, no. So there is that issue. As you can see, hollow grind. I think that covers all of the issues with the knife. And th there are a couple of good things about it. Yeah, that, that's a very comfortable handle. You can get all four fingers on there. At least I can. Keep in mind, I wear large size gloves. So what do I think of this guy overall? Well, the symmetrical blade shape might be a problem in certain jurisdictions if you're EDCing this. Although, for our friends on the other side of the pond, the fact that this is designed to open two-handed, that's going to be a bonus. The lock mechanism is going to be an issue. But, yeah, in certain restrictive jurisdictions, for example, Germany, the fact that this knife requires two hands to open, yeah, that's going to make it street legal as well as in other jurisdictions that unfortunately have banned one-hand opening features on blades. Yep. Apparently, good guys use two hands and psychopaths use one and thumb their blade open. It's just so ridiculous. Now, I do want to say that Stanley, in the past, they have made actual lockback knives with their logo and with the Stanley name proudly engraved on the tank. Not too many models, and they're a little bit difficult to find online, although if you look hard enough, you can. There's also a Stanley Fat Max variation, not of this knife, but of a different design. That one has a one-hand opening blade hole feature and a carry clip, but one position tip down only. This knife, I mean, honestly, if you're doing some sort of home renovation or home construction and you need to cut things which are dirty, disgusting, and you really don't want to use your nicer knives, but maybe a razor knife or box cutter would not be appropriate for the job. Well, here you go. 
this thing online, less than $13. Not 30, 13, less than that. So yeah, you're getting a cheap knife. Not sure how long that edge will last before you need to resharpen it, but you are getting a surprisingly good lock mechanism. Whoever made this knife for Stanley did not cheap out on the lock mechanism. Again, tiniest hint of up and down and side to side play. Maybe that's just on my example. I don't think most people will even notice it. I did. But yeah, that, that lock mechanism, that traditional rocker lock me mechanism for under 13 bucks, wow. That is surprisingly good at doing its job. That's a quality lock that they used on this knife. And again, very comfortable in hand, not recommended for heavy duty tasks or certain medium duty tasks. For some, the fact that the tip is rounded off just a little bit, that's going to be aggravating and annoying. But how does it cut? Well, it gets the job done. This thing definitely shipped out to me with a working edge. It gets the job done. No, it's not hair shaving sharp, but it's not dull either. Like I said, um, working edge. I would recommend touching up the edge when you get it, before you use it, but it's not really a requirement. I mean, this is a, a bit of a tough knife for me to recommend because it doesn't have a one-hand opening feature. It doesn't have a pocket carry clip. That lanyard hole, yeah, it's a little sharp. But, I mean, it is comfortable in hand. And that lock mechanism, whoever made this knife for Stanley did a fantastic job with that lock mechanism. Yeah, yeah. This is the type of rocker lock mechanism that you would find on significantly more expensive knives. I mean, I'll say it, this lock, just as good as on my traditional Buck Model 110. 110. Now, it's not an old-fashioned 110 from decades ago. It's a newer 110, but for those of you out there who have a Buck Model 110, and I'm guessing a lot of you do, you know how good that rocker lock is on that model. This one, I have to say it, it's just as good. Just as good. For under 13 bucks, wow. Well, honestly, guys, again, it's under 13 bucks. And for what you're getting, how could I not recommend it? If this was 30 or 50, no. But for under 13 bucks, I mean, come on. Yeah. I can definitely recommend this knife despite the fact that it doesn't come with a pocket carry clip, it doesn't come with a one-hand opening feature. I mean, it is surprisingly light, but that's mostly because it is skeletonized and those handles are aluminum. 
So, yeah, you can find this knife online, and it would be perfect for anyone who's doing some home renovation. You need to cut up some materials, but you really don't want to use your more expensive, better quality locking folding knives. There you go. Under 13 bucks. That still amazes me for what you get. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please continue to stay safe out there. Unfortunately, it's still dangerous. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.